I'm not my mother. Why do I want to be like my mother? What is, what is hurting about not being anything like her, not having the stability or... I just felt like my life was like a bunch of spaghetti and hers was, <laughs> you know, followed a trajectory. And um, the sadness of not wearing a, a veil, not having a wedding ring, not um, breastfeeding or carrying a child in my womb was, it was a process that I was working through. Hi, I'm Melissa Hayden. I am an actor and an artist. I would say I'm a painter and a performance artist <laughs> who's recently moved to Johannesburg and I absolutely love this place. It's alive, it's um, open and free and there's so much conversation happening between artists. I've been acting in Cape Town since I graduated in 2010. I'm taking a year off while I'm pregnant, <laughs> while I'm gestating. And sometimes I miss it, uh, but it's actually really relaxing to be uh, more internal and less focused on the exterior. Yeah, I think a lot of my work is autobiographical, so I, I, am, I am going to be telling the story of pregnancy <laughs> because it's such a huge life change it's physical it's emotional um, I I've been quite wild in the my the way I work I work for 20 hours non-stop and then I crash for a few days and now I can't do that anymore um, I work with lots of chemicals and I get my hands really dirty and um, yeah I get sweaty and I feel like I have to take more care and also like my body just can't do that anymore I get faint <laughs> so um, yeah finding a gentler practice I'm 36 years old. Um, my mother got married when she was 21, when she just turned 21. And I kind of looked at my life in my early 30s and thought as an actor and an artist, I, I can't be a mother. Like, how do I raise a child, giving the child everything that <laughs> he or she needs financially and, and also will I have time, all the time to give the child. And I also didn't have a partner. It was a process that I was working through, so I worked through that with dance. I was actually living in my garage studio at that point, so it was extremely like focused on those thoughts. I was I was deeply immersed in 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 I think the trauma and the healing and then a whole series came from the physical performance um, and then I I draw from the video taken so that's often the the way that I work it's a dance and or a physical expression and then the after effects are made from images of the dance so it carries movement and emotion and because of my acting training. Um, yeah, I feel that's one of my gifts is expression. I get to meet new artists every day <laughs> downstairs as I come in and go out of the building and there's always different stories and we talk about like working in South Africa and now what would it be like if I as a an outsider from Dornfontein or Hillbrow like came to paint the streets of Hillbrow and people like am I stealing their stories or am I documenting what I'm seeing am I sharing um, I'm really interested in the the litter problem here 
on the streets. I always felt the imposter syndrome because I've been trained as an actor, as a performer. And I am quite at ease with that now. I, I know how to take criticism. I know, uh, I know the professional ins and outs of the business and I know how to prepare, I know how to perform, I know how to cool off afterwards. Um, and with art, I think I, I always thought I'm entering a world that is very hierarchical and um, they're gonna know that I'm they're gonna know that I'm not <laughs> trained that I just learned by osmosis and through my own practice um, but now I think that's pretty cool because it's it's quite what is the word it's quite naive and I think sometimes naivety is the is an honest form of painting. It's nice. To, I love learning, um, but I don't want all the air knocked out of my sails by rules. Actually, I used to want to be a dancer, but I struggle with choreography. So acting, um, I think, came through dance because the, the examiners would always say, oh, she has such a lovely smile. I couldn't do the steps, but <laughs> I could express. Um, so then, yeah, I went to, into into acting, but then painting was a way where nobody else was watching what I was doing and no one else was, you know, commenting or critiquing. And it was a pure form of private expression. And I found that extremely therapeutic and uh, precious. My father is a beautiful watercolorist, but he rarely paints. He's also a perfectionist, which I am not. Um, but he's he's got a beautiful eye, and yeah, I think he also dwells in the melancholy a lot. So he loves seascapes and lonely piers and windswept. He loves Turner, so we always had Turner, Turner's art out when we were young and my dad raving about Turner <laughs> so that's that's got my romantic side going I love Toulouse-Lautrec um, I love the way that he captured the, the movement and imperfection of people as well as emotions um, I love Im the impressionists and the romanticists and um, Yeah, I love the dreaminess and the light catching and also how they don't try to be like photographs because that's photography. Like, they add something of their soul into the work. Currently, I'm working on um, the, the ex how to express I want to eat this paint. I want to create like a sensation of eat this paint. So how tactile can paint and color be? And that, that's one part. And the other part, just I want to really search into the delicate, fragile space. How can I portray the most delicate and fragile, the hidden, the stuff that we want to protect to to physicalize them in a painting or in a dance piece gives them a voice my obsessions are sensory i spend quite a bit of my time dreaming i stare at things a wall a plate of food the street things outside the car window and i'm both calmed and stimulated by actively looking Think of thick, cloggy, hot, dirty air, rubbish piled up on the street. And think of clean, fresh, 
feathery, delicate, cool mist in an early morning. All these hypersensory experiences change the way I feel in my skin. The painting could portray the feeling of rubbing my hands over my lover's sweaty skin in a room with a red light. The feeling of wholeness and desire. I want to capture those experiences visually and emotionally and then relive them through making art. The pictures are a kind of permanent after effect. I can dip into the experiences again like a nighttime swim. The fact that others may wish to buy these after effects helps me make a living out of reveling in the full sensory experience of life. And hopefully my work inspires people to feel things.